This is a time we need to ascend. We not only need to press through. Many people want to just put their head down and press through. No, the Lord is saying lift your head and come up hither. Not in pride. Lift your eyes to the hill from which comes your help. Every day you don't get what you've done, he showed you mercy. And it's new every day. And you dare worship anyone but him. And by him I mean Jesus. Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahweh, the only living God. Okay, beloved, this is the last of the seven visions of war uh, recorded in uh, a video. As I promised, I'm going to get right into this. Um, I'm going to tell you, as I do in every one of them, as I give dreams and visions, I have subjective and objective view. That is part of what comes with the gift of a seer, and I'm still actually learning uh, different things and facets of this gift, but that is why I am usually looking on being moved around, and I can see through their eyes as the Spirit chooses to give me that experience that I experience their fear, how they feel, and I see what they see as I look on. Um, and this always all happens at once. So let's get right into this. This is dream number seven of the seven visions of war. Uh, John 13 and 19. Now I tell you before it come that when it come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Proverbs 29 and 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Second Chronicles 36 and 16. But they mock the messengers of God and despise their words until the wrath of the Lord arose. That's what they're doing now. Until there was no remedy. And many people are there. 1 John 4 and 6, he that knoweth God heareth us, and he that is not of God heareth us not. Ezekiel 33 and 33, and when he, and when this cometh to pass, and Lord will come to pass, uh, then they shall know that the prophet has been among them. Uh, return unto me, and I will return unto you. That's Malachi 3 and 7. I will put this in the notes as well. Acts 3 and 19, repent that your sins may be blotted out. I will put that in the notes. Behold, he comes quickly. This is Revelation 16 and 15. I am warning the wicked according to, uh, wicked according to Ezekiel 33, 7 through 9. And I am warning the righteous according to Ezekiel 3 and 20. Again, when a righteous man doeth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stone of the block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness, uh, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. But his blood I will require at thine hand, which is why I warn y'all now. This is not just warning of genius and vision. This is warning by way of the ministry message that I give that you can correct your behavior, that you do not die in your sin. Because you cannot just say grace covers all you do. You have got to live holy. Uh, uh, so you are getting straight word from people who are echo ministry and warning according to his word. Matthew 10 verse 27. What I tell you in darkness, that speak you in light. And what you hear in the ear, that preach you from the housetops. Uh, Acts 2, 2, verse 17 through 18. Uh, this is about the outpouring of the Spirit. And you would dream dreams and you would prophesy. For he would pour out of his Spirit in those days. Uh, on the handmaids and servants, we would dream dreams and see visions. I will put that in a note because I'm going to get right into this last one. Because it's a very detailed uh, final vision of the two armies that come against the United States. Uh, very, very detailed, okay? Um... I had this vision originally, and it this was, I, I don't know if you ever had a vision where you could actually feel the heat and the rumble and feel the bombs and feel all the stuff that go on and the death, and you feel their fear, you feel their terror, you feel the heat go down their throat, you feel, you feel their heart stop, you feel the gas for breath, you feel their fear, you feel their knees give out, you feel it. This is part of subjective and objective view, okay? Um... And that's what I've been seeing on. And he didn't bring me into the fact of being a seer to later. And why I always saw and experienced the visions just this way. Okay. Vision number seven. May 9th of 2011. And it was early a.m. Uh, that I had this dream. Always early. Okay. I'm going to read it verbatim. And I will elaborate as I need to. Okay. I awoke today. I laid there for about 20 seconds. Then looked at the clock and it was 6.16. This is what I wrote. It was 6.16. Whatever that means. Goodness gracious. Okay. From a very uh, real and horrifying dream, my heart racing, I reside in Oklahoma City. I said in Oklahoma City then. Though I am not sure that was the state I was in in the dream. Okay. I do know it was America because for some reason... It was in my heart throughout the dream. And this is why I'm still very new. Because I started ministering around this time. This 2011. Um, but he had been giving me dreams a lot. Okay. 
The first thing was a large part of my family was there. And I'm going to give you understanding on this. The people I were warning were brothers and sisters in Christ, which is why he was showing me my siblings. These are your brethren. So all through this dream, I'm warning brethren like I'm, like I'm warning you. So I'm going to give you that understanding now for some of the understanding the Spirit gave me. I saw my earthly sibling because he's telling me I was warning brothers and sisters in Christ of the things to come. That's why I saw brethren, uh, my earthly family. And that's the understanding that the Holy Spirit is giving me on that now. The first thing, it was a large part of my family was there, but only my siblings. That's why, because it's the beloved I'm talking to. Then there was a couple of other people whom I did not know. We appeared, and I keep using the word appeared, because I'm going to explain it the best I can. We appeared to be in a house. My brothers were sitting on a couch. And keep in mind that every time I say this, this is, this is brethren, okay? My brothers were sitting on the couch. I could see we were on alert. Everybody was on alert. Everybody was on high alert. Nobody was sitting easy. I never sat. So as I looked in this dream, I never sat down. I never sat. The house seemed so small. It did. It seemed very small. Not even the size of this room. Almost like a couch and one, almost like a couch and one other area and a window right behind the couch. There were explosions to our east and we jumped up as we stood we appeared, literally, I got to tell you how this happened. There was explosions to our east, and we, and we were in the house, okay? Keep in mind. And when we jumped up, as we stood, we, were, we appeared outside. That house wasn't there no more. Outside the house, we, we appeared outside the house. The house wasn't there. When we were outside, we appeared to be in a park. I'm describing what I can see the best way I can because it was hilly, but there was sand under my feet. Uh, there was sand, and it's sand, y'all. I don't know where sand is, and I understand now because the two coasts have sand. Excuse me. There was sand, and we could see the whole city. I remember my brother saying to my sister that it was a far way. Keep in mind, this is brethren, even though they look like my earthly siblings because the Holy Spirit has gave me clarity on that. We were not sure what it was at the time. Then a short while later, we appeared to be in the house again. And one of the people whom I don't know, I don't know who this person was, was sitting there. And then there were more explosions, a lot closer. These explosions were a lot closer. My younger brother came in excitedly and told my older brother that it was an army marching that we needed to run quickly to the west. He told us to run to the west because he had came from the east because he said run to the west. My older brother asked him how close, and he said very close. Then suddenly there were more explosions and planes, plane bombings. I could literally feel the ground shaking around me. And these, this person who was sitting on the couch was killed. She had shrapnel in her, her head. And I mean, it was very graphic. I saw the shrapnel go into her head, and it was not hidden from my eyes. Uh, and my brother turned her over because he didn't want to look at it. He turned her over when she fell over and we saw the shrapnel in her. Okay? Then we appeared outside again. There was no house. But yet I remember that I was going into a room to take cover. But yet there was a, but yet there was a utility room standing alone there and I entered it. The thing I recall about that is that when that, the thing that I recall about that is that when just standing there, it appeared as if nothing was there. I got to stop right here to tell you what I saw. We were outside, okay? But somehow I knew that a hiding place was there. Just to picture yourself standing out in the open air. You just standing outside. You see hills and valleys and sand, bombs, because this is what happened. It was helicopters flying over. An American flag was waving in the wind. That's how I knew it was America. It was an American flag waving in the wind. Helicopters going over. Fireballs going up in the air. Bombs were dropping. I was looking at sand. It was a hilly place, wherever it was. It had sand. And it, in the open air, I could feel the air on my skin. But that room in the spirit I saw. And when I ran into the room, because I was trying to get the brothers and sisters to follow me, and you're going to see in the rest of this vision, I ran into a room that was in mid air. It wasn't marked. It looked like open air. But to my eyes, I saw a room. It was open air. I ran toward it. It's like I turned the corner, 
turned the corner again, and when I entered this what looked like a covering hiding place, it was in midair. But when I went in, it was a, it was a hiding place. It was a hiding place that was hidden in midair. Mid, nothing was there, but I knew it was there, and I was trying to get people to come. And I ran and ran. Uh, it like I, I, it's like I shot toward it, turned one corner, turned, and into this hiding place that was in mid air, mid, not up in the air, but outside. But I knew it was there. Okay, and that's what I saw on that part. Let me keep going. Uh, the thing I recall about that is that when just standing there, it appeared as if nothing was even there, as if the wound was invisible. Yet I knew to run to that area, and it was is. And it was as if I turned a corner and the room was there. And that's what happened. I turned and went into a room that appeared to be in out of nowhere. But I hid. And I was trying to get them to follow. Okay? There were so many explosions. Lights in the sky. And fire and bombs. Then my brother said, we have to go. We have to go now. The other way. But as we turn to run the other as as we turned to run there, turned to run, there was a huge explosion in that direction. The fire was so big, and my brother had who had went that way to see if it was clear came running back and said there was an army coming from the direction as well. That direction as well. There were planes and fire to my left and explosions, and I could hear the armies. Then I saw explosions nearly up on us. Everyone was panicked and standing there in shock. So there was from the right and to the left. And I'm telling you, because after I can't give you every detail of it in writing because it would be pages and pages. There was marching coming from the west, marching coming from the east. My uh, brother had came from the east and said, we got to go west. So we told him to go check it out. He went west while all this other stuff was going on. And as we went to go that way, bombs dropped that way. And I'm telling you, when I, you could literally hear it, you when you could hear them. But the ground was rumbling, marching, shaking. Like every time the march, you could just shake, 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 coming from the east and coming from the west. And bombs and fire. And I'm telling y'all, it's as real as you could ever imagine. Um, bombs falling. And uh, that's when I saw the American flag. It wasn't until that final uh, explosion when I saw the helicopter going over and the American flag was waving in the wind and I noticed that it was sand under my foot. It was a hilly area and we don't live. It was a hilly area with sand and the American flag was blowing and bombs were dropping and an invasion of army was coming from the both sides of the United States. It was coming from the east and it was coming from the west. And I told you that after the fact, the Holy Spirit gave me revelation of why I was seeing my siblings in there is it's the brethren. Uh, that I was warning and the hiding place is a place that was annoying apparently in my heart. I don't know how, but it seemed to be no, it seemed to be just open air. And I ran and cut a corner and I could see it was a room, but it was literally invisible, but I knew it was there. And I was trying in the vision, I was trying to get them to follow me and they would not hearken. I was trying to get them to listen and they would out of here. And I was like, why did I see my brother? And then where is that at? The Holy Spirit gave me that understanding that this is the brothers and sisters in Christ um, uh, in the walk that you have tried to warn. Um, and this is a warning going forth because when I, uh, when that last army was coming and the bombs went off and we couldn't go that way, that is where I awoke from that vision um, of two armies uh, marching uh, up on the United States. You know, two armies were coming against them at once from the East Coast and from the West Coast. Uh, so take all these visions before the Lord because this is again seven visions of war. Many of you know I have had many more than that. I record them all and I've been loading them up because I learned to do things different because I was still learning then uh, even with audio that I should have done them separate. Um, and now they are separate and I'm going to load them up as audio. I'm going to use a small little picture on the art on this picture on the art to show you that this is from the seven dreams of war. The audio of all seven of them together, I'm going to still leave there for those who want to just listen to the audio and let it play through. That will still be there available for you. But I did this in obedience and according to the word that I've given you that I was going to do that. And I will most likely move forth because there are some I have uh, as far as the sheep and the goat and different things that I did. 
I didn't do them all together, but I did them on audio. And some of them I am going to redo and do them on video uh, because the one with the separation of the sheep and the goat and the return of the Nazi salute and the Hitler and the spirit of Hitler, which is the Antichrist spirit, was a very detailed and uh, uh, a violent dream as well. There will be a lot of betrayal and deception and lying, and you have to really pay attention. Look at the light of someone's life, not how good they talk, not how good they sound, not how down to earth they sound. Look at the fruit of their life and the fruit of their spirit and what they do and the way they do it because the Lord always uh has a way of doing things and if it is not of his spirit it, it does not attest to the right way of living and being you should know that it's not of God and if not you need to sit still before the Lord until you go thereby or you will end up being deceived uh, again beloved I'm going to load these up probably one a day because I don't like to just load up seven videos at once because it to preach people out for some reason and sometimes it's kind of like a kid when you put too much food and they play face they start playing with it um and i keep telling y'all don't play with anointed word and don't play with the word the lord's sin you will be held accountable whether you choose to believe me or not i have told you and all that matters is that i've told you and i've shared this according to the word of god that what he has whispered and told me in my ear i have preached from the housetop even in the ministry messages not that not just the dream and visions and the prophetic warnings also the word because I told you I am prophesying to the perplexities and I'm given the practicalities which is why I dissect the word prophesying is prophesying from the word you use the scripture to speak forth over someone's life and to warn them to the, the doom to come from the word of God but then you have the prophecy which is the foretelling but you cannot forget the tell forth of the prophecy way of living and being uh, grace be with you beloved uh, these will be loaded up day by day I love you all so into the good ground of preach be a voice not an echo yet only as you have purposed in your heart for god loves a cheerful giver the truth, the truth of the word of god first corinthians 9 11 reads if we have sown into your spiritual things is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things give only with purpose and cheer for we desire fruit that will abound towards your account we thank you for all of your support seed of your time seed of your prayers and the purpose seed of your gifts to give visit our youtube channel and click on the paypal logo or go directly to paypal using the following links or email preach bvne at yahoo.com to listen to more messages and for the latest updates and offers visit www.preachbvne.webs.com also view messages on the youtube channel at www.youtube.com slash c slash preach be a voice not an echo ministry also like us on facebook and follow us on twitter do the work of an evangelist watch it then share it beloved we wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers grace be with you thank you for joining us today on preach be a voice not an echo we pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message until next time we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.